when I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing. Bernie Sanders was on CNN with Anderson Cooper, where finally, finally, he went after Joe Biden's electability. And as I'm going to get to later, he also uh, discussed Elizabeth Warren's health care plan. But first, let's get to um, Bernie's thoughts on Joe Biden and his electability. You said recently about Vice President Biden, uh, uh, his record, you said to The Washington Post, quote, it's just a lot of baggage that Joe takes into a campaign, which isn't going to create energy and excitement. Um, is there something specifically you were referring to in terms of baggage? Sure. I mean, look, I, Joe and I are friends, and, and I truly like Joe. But what is imperative is that we defeat Trump, the most dangerous president in modern history. And that means you're going to have to have a huge voter turnout. You're going to have to get working people excited. You're going to have to get young people excited. Joe Biden voted and helped lead the effort for the war in Iraq, the most dangerous foreign policy blunder in the modern history of this country. Joe Biden voted for the disastrous trade agreements like NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, which cost us millions of jobs. Do you think that's going to play well in Michigan or Wisconsin or Pennsylvania? You know, Joe Biden has been on the floor of the Senate uh, talking about the need to cut Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid. Uh, Joe, Bi Joe Biden uh, pushed a bankruptcy bill, which has caused enormous financial problems for working families. So if we're going to beat Trump, we need turnout. And to get turnout, you need energy and excitement. And I just don't think that that kind of record is going to bring forth the energy that we need to defeat Trump. So finally, Bernie Sanders has made this point. He has connected Joe Biden's poor record to his to Biden's electability or lack thereof. So in order to win in 2020, you need to be energized. Voters need to be energized around the candidate. Hillary Clinton, you know, for all her faults, she actually had more energy behind her than Joe Biden does right now. And Hillary still lost. The real energy is behind Bernie Sanders. Now, the worry here isn't that, you know, if Biden's the nominee, the worry isn't that Democrats are going to vote for Trump. No, the worry is that Biden will suppress the vote because of his horrible record. Much like Hillary Clinton suppressed the vote, Hillary Clinton did not bring out non-voters, did not bring out young people. Bernie Sanders, that is his base. Young people, typical non-voters, independents, people that did not come out for Hillary in 2016 will come out for Bernie Sanders. And on top of that, the people that came out to vote against Trump in 2016 will still come out for Bernie Sanders because they still hate Trump. So you have to be able to reach voters that Hillary Clinton didn't reach in 2016. Biden doesn't do that. Bernie Sanders does that. Now, just to go over, you know, one piece of the record here. So Bernie broke it down almost completely. But I want to show you um, this clip from 1995. The, the clip that Bernie Sanders is referencing here when he talks about how Joe Biden was on the Senate floor discussing uh, cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. I'm up for re-election this year, and I'm going to remind everybody what I did at home, which is going to cost me politically. I, when I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. All Donald Trump needs to do is put that clip into an ad, and you will suppress the Democratic vote. And you won't find clips like that of Bernie Sanders, because Bernie Sanders has been the, on the opposite side of all of those issues. Bernie Sanders has been on the correct side of these issues, fighting for people the entire time, while senators like Joe Biden have been fighting against him. I mean, if you can't understand how unelectable Joe Biden is, I don't know what to tell you. The polling really does not give you uh, the full picture because polling often doesn't include typical non-voters or young people. So it is not giving you the correct picture right now because in polling, both Biden and Bernie Sanders are defeating Trump in, in statewide polls. But uh, just wait. Donald Trump has the ability here to put a clip like that and many more clips similar to that one into ads to suppress the Democratic base. Just like Hillary Clinton suppressed the base, Joe Biden will suppress the base. And the strategy that Hillary Clinton had of reaching out to conservative voters didn't pay off, did it? 
And it's the same strategy that Joe Biden is trying to use right now to reach out to uh, voters. So let me uh, move on now to um, Elizabeth Warren. So Anderson Cooper brought up Elizabeth Warren's health care plan, and uh, Bernie Sanders gave his thoughts on that as well. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren uh, was asked by Jake Tapper yesterday why she believes her Medicare for All transition plan is 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 uh, better than yours. I want to play her response so that you uh, you have an opportunity to respond to that. It gets the most help to the most people the quickest possible. Help starts on day one, and then it's full health care coverage for 135 million people to be able to opt into it at absolutely no cost. So do you think his we is can unrealistic? Do that on a 50 vote, we can do that on a 50 vote budget reconciliation and get help to people. Let people experience it. D- does her plan, in your opinion, get the most help to the most people the quickest possible? I think my plan makes a lot more sense. And this is why. For a hundred years, Anderson, from Teddy Roosevelt on, we have been talking about the need for health care for all. But as I think everybody understands, the reason we are not doing that, the reason why we, are, we have 87 million people uninsured and underinsured, why we spend twice as much per capita as the people of any other country, and why the health care industry last year made $100 billion, they have the power. They dictate they and the drug companies dictate what happens in health care. When I win, or at least when I hope I win the election, we will have the momentum in this country to finally tell the drug companies who are charging us by far the highest prices in the world, the insurance companies who are ripping us off, that finally, finally, we are going to move to a Medicare for all single payer system with millions of people standing up and demanding that. Our program, my legislation, is a four-year transition period. And the first year, we expand mm-hmm. Medicare to cover hearing aids, dental, clear, dental care, eyeglasses, and home health care. And we lower the eligibility age from 65 to 55. That's in the first year. I think there will be massive support mm-hmm. for that idea. And the next year, it's 45, 35, and in four years, everybody is in. That is the easiest way to bring universal health care to all Americans. So Bernie makes some great points here, but I'm going to make the larger point that he didn't make here. That having this two-piece plan that Elizabeth Warren has, where in the first year you pass a public option, and then three years later, right before the next election, you somehow pass Medicare for all. What this does is divide the healthcare fight into two big political fights. And it gives private healthcare interests a three-year window to ramp up their fight against Medicare for all. So under a public option, the way Elizabeth Warren's laying it out, her first initial move is a public option. Okay, let's say that gets passed, even though that will take just as much of a political fight as Medicare for all will. Let's say she passes a public option in the first year. Private insurance interests now have three years to offset sick people onto the public system, drain the public system of resources, turn around three years later and say, look at that, I guess Medicare for all is not going to work because we just helped to drain the public system of resources and act like that's what Medicare for all would be like under a Medicare for all system, when it would not be. Medicare for all is a single payer system. Everybody in the same pool, everybody pays in, which also means you have complete freedom when it comes to choice of doctor, provider. I mean, I as a Canadian understand this. Under a single payer system, a single payer system does not operate the same way as a public option does. So there's this idea out there that, well, public option is better than nothing. A public option, all it would do is allow private interests to then try and make the case why a Medicare for all system would not work by doing what, ex- what I just said exactly, by putting the sick people onto the public system, draining the public system of resources, and acting like that's what Medicare for all would be like. It is horrible strategy. So on top of the fact that that aspect of it is, is poor strategy, it also just separates this healthcare fight into two political fights that you don't need to have. I mean, this idea that, you know, Congress is going to fight you any less if it's a public option is crazy. You're going to have the healthcare fight regardless. You might as well make it the big one. You might as well make it a singular fight and have a giant movement of people behind you that Bernie Sanders has. So this is also 
what uh, separates Bernie Sanders from Elizabeth Warren is the giant movement behind him. This is a political movement that will be required to pass anything big like Medicare for all. It will require political pressure. So you need that movement in order to get any of this change. And Elizabeth Warren or Joe Biden, nobody else has that political movement, has that kind of engaged support base that Bernie Sanders has.